Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that. And also, if there is any lag to this video, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision-related video here on my channel, and a bit of a different one. I think. I've never really spoken about this sort of stuff before because it's never really come up, but I think with the possibility of next year's competition being one that I am very much able to go to, I think maybe it's worth discussing. I don't know. Feel free to leave comments down below if you so wish, and links as always in the description to my other social media pages, including the relatively new Instagram page, rajc.esc, which I am co-running with a really good friend of mine. There are some things about Eurovision 2023 that I want to discuss later on, mainly newspaper clippings, which I shall get my hands on in just a moment. But before that, I want to talk about uh, the fact that next year's show, as we all know, is going to be staged in the United Kingdom. This is because Ukraine are unable to stage it because of the ongoing conflict with Russia. And even if that conflict came to an end pretty soon, which we're hoping it all will, because it's going to take a long time for Ukraine to get themselves going again and back on their feet, it makes sense, really, that some other country stages the competition with the cooperation of the Ukrainian broadcaster. And because the UK finished second, it's the BBC's turn. And as of right now, as I'm recording this video, I'm very much under the assumption that the bidding process is underway. The BBC are working with the EBU, all of that business. Loads of cities are mounting bids. Glasgow is the hot favourite still, but you've got Manchester, Birmingham, London, Brighton, Wolverhampton, Belfast, Cardiff, Liverpool, etc. Sheffield, loads and loads of places, and I'm sure more will announce their intention to bid very soon too. What I'm going to be talking about today, and as I said earlier, I think, it's something I've never really spoken before on my channel, but I think it's relevant. I really do. I've not seen anybody else who talks about Eurovision online discuss this particular element of the contest and it's all sort of tied in together it's confidence it's travel anxiety and it's just anxiety in general which is a really big umbrella term there's lots of aspects to it but in my instance it is sort of solo travel related now the reason i'm talking about this is because in the past I've thought about going to Eurovision, but I've always been quite realistic about it as well. So I thought about going in 2020 when it was going to be staged in Rotterdam. Of course, the pandemic put the kibosh on that. But for a while, it was something I was really considering. I was thinking about going with a friend of mine. I'd spoken about it with them. And then for 2021, last year, I also spoke to the same friend about possibly going over to the Netherlands and enjoying the show if I was able to get tickets. But the realist part of me knew that that was never going to happen. Why? Because of this anxiety and lack of confidence about travelling by myself. Even though the Netherlands really isn't that far to get to from where I am. Now, next year, it's in my country. It could be staged really not that far away from where I live at all. I live pretty much in the middle of England. Birmingham is just over an hour away by car. London is about an hour and a half away by car, shorter than that by train. Manchester's only a few hours up the road. Glasgow, which is quite far away, is still fairly easy for me to get to. But that anxiety could still rear its ugly head, if you see what I mean. Even if it was Birmingham, which is where it was staged in 1998, of course. If it was Birmingham again... I mean, that's so easy for me to get to. Car, train, you know, easy peasy. But, would I actually go to it? Would I feel confident enough just to travel up the road somewhere by myself? I really don't know. The reason I say this is because in the past, there's been a few instances, which I'm not going to go into too specifically here, but there's been a few instances where I've actually backed out of things because I haven't felt comfortable doing them. So a couple of years ago, there was an incident where a friend of mine who I'd been in touch with for years, they were going to be in London and I wanted to meet them. I wanted to hang out with them. 
and I would have stayed overnight in London, and I think the accommodation was all sort of sorted, really. And, you know, I was gearing up for it, but I thought, hang on a minute, I'm going to be going by myself here. And it shouldn't have been an issue. I mean, I was in my mid-twenties anyway by this point. It should not have been an issue. But it was playing on my mind, and the date was getting closer. And I ended up backing out. I didn't have anybody to go with. I didn't feel comfortable getting the train by myself. I knew when in London with this friend, I would be probably completely fine. No issues at all. But it was the matter of getting there by myself that was the stumbling block. And so I didn't go, and I do regret it. Um, there's also been instances in the past where I just haven't felt comfortable doing something by myself in general, let alone travel related. And certainly as I've got older, I found it to be certainly infrequent. But when it does come along, it is really, really annoying. And to be honest, quite embarrassing. Um, I've mentioned before to a few people about this sort of separation anxiety which I think plays a very small part as well with the travel related anxiety it's really not a very pleasant thing at all anyway going back to the point with Eurovision next year it's the main thing that's stopping me from maybe even applying for tickets in the first place because I could get tickets but what if I've got nowhere to stay that's stress that's anxiety what if I've got somewhere to stay but I haven't got tickets do I go anyway? Little bit of stress, little bit of anxiety. What if I can't get a friend to come with me? What do I do then? Do I try and get tickets anyway? Would I feel confident enough to do this? What about actually getting to the venue? Staying overnight? If it's Glasgow, possibly two or three nights. Uh, and also, I haven't even factored in the cost of this stuff yet, which actually is the least of my concerns right now, and I think the least of my concerns moving forwards. There's just so many things playing on my mind, but they're, imp they're important things to consider, you know. I can't just be that sort of person who's like, right, it's on. Because actually, it's not. And part of me is really going to have to sort of G myself up for this. Right from the very start, as soon as we know the host city, you know that hotel rooms are going to be blocked out left, right and centre. Prices will rock it up as well. So you've got to be quick. That's a little bit of stress, potentially. And then also, you know, tickets will go on sale. That's going to be manic. I think the chances of getting tickets for the actual live final on a Saturday night, realistically, you know, they're pretty damn slim and hard to get a hold of. But if you are able to get tickets for it, well done. It's like, you know, Charlie and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory when he gets that golden ticket to go and see Willy Wonka. That's what I imagine it would feel like. Um, I've already asked a couple of friends of mine who aren't Eurovision fans if they would tag along, and two of them have said they probably would. One today um, certainly said that they would try and come with me, which is fantastic, and I know they would come with me. It would be absolutely wonderful. So, you see, maybe I'm talking about all of this, and actually it doesn't really matter at all, because Eurovision is maybe something that you should experience with a friend. Experiencing it by yourself is great but maybe it really is the sort of experience where if you're with somebody it's just that more magical that much more amazing if you see what i mean so maybe all of that stuff i've just said for the past eight minutes is an absolute load of rubbish maybe i should absolutely be going with a friend and then all of this anxiety that i'm talking about will not come along it just won't happen it will not present itself in some form and i mentioned the confidence and like i said the confidence ties in with this sort of travel anxiety you know, I went to London in June. It was fine because I was with my brother. Would I have gone book shopping, that's what it was, by myself? Maybe not. Maybe not. Not because I wouldn't know where I was going. I plan everything really intensely. But it would just be getting there in the first place. You know, the stress of like, oh, I've got to get it at this time, the train. And, I'm, you know, sitting down here and... Uh, just knowing where I'm going as soon as I get off the train. I can't be doing with any faff, if you see what I mean. I want things to go as smoothly as possible. And all of this could come along next May and be really, really problematic. I went to London last month uh, to a concert. And 
it wasn't being around 70,000 people didn't bother me it wasn't the thought of maybe catching the virus that didn't really bother me to be honest if for some reason it had just been me going to this it would never have happened I would never have been able to do it I, I would have felt useless I'm going to London tomorrow to watch the Women's European Championship final at Wembley 90,000 between England and Germany I'm going with two really good old schoolmates of mine if it had just been me going forget it one of my friends is staying with one of their friends in another part of London and tomorrow they've got to travel from that area to Wembley which is quite far and you know traffic's going to be immense that is something that I don't think I could ever do well certainly not at this stage next May I'll be 30 you'd think all of this would not be a problem that I would be able to actually travel somewhere by myself and not feel really dodgy about it and I want to make it very clear there are people out there with considerably worse anxiety than me which presents itself considerably more frequently than mine does absolutely my anxiety if you want to call it that and I am in this instance is absolutely tame I really do feel it's so minute and it comes along so infrequently but when it is present it is crap it really really feels bad and I hope that if I somehow get tickets for next year's show and for some reason it is just me going to this that I'm able to do so I know if I was there there's the very real possibility that I could meet up with fellow youtubers other people who really enjoy the contest that would be great we'd all look after each other it would be a great time maybe I'm just overthinking everything but I suppose it's the same with any major event if you go to a concert by yourself if you go to a big city by yourself if you travel abroad by yourself which let me tell you is not something that I think I would be able to do for some time yet you know I know other people go through it but I'm talking about it now because uh, I think it's relevant and hopefully next May um, if thankfully I'm able to attend these elements these factors they're not going to be factors they'll just be things that don't exist at that time and I'm able to thoroughly immerse myself in something that I'm really passionate about and very excited for anyway let me know your thoughts on this because I'm really interested to know I'm now going to sort of wrap up this fairly short video for me by going through some of the newspaper articles that I've been able to pick up over the past few days where uh, the writers are just discussing the fact that the UK is hosting the show so just bear with me here let's see what we've got um, that's not relevant here we go um, what shall I start with uh, not that, not that, and not that. These. Bear with me, because I'm probably going to read out most of these. Um, first up is uh, The Guardian, and this is written by Jim Warderson and Aubrey Allegretti. It says here, the Eurovision Song Contest will be hosted in the UK next year after Ukraine's public broadcaster dropped its objections and agreed to work with the BBC on the event. Um, it also says here, organisers concluded this could not be done safely while the country, that's Ukraine of course, was at war with Russia, angering the Ukrainian government which said it had submitted a workable plan. The Ukrainian culture minister Alexander Tachenko told The Guardian last month his country was ready to host. He said the EBU, which organises the event, should consider how to change the rules of Eurovision for the country that is fighting for independence and democracy. And as I've said in previous videos, with all due respect, you're at war. You're not hosting anything anytime soon. In a compromise, the UK will host next year's contest, but produce a programme that, in the words of the BBC, has glorious Ukraine at its heart. This article also mentions the special logo that will be released pretty soon, marking this collaboration, because that's what it is. Uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, had discussed the issue at length with soon to be former Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Uh, number 10 said yesterday it had appealed to the EBU 
for a safe city in Ukraine to host next year's contest, and it was deeply regrettable it had become clear that that would not be possible. This is probably, and it wouldn't surprise me at all, probably because the government doesn't want to uh, dish out some money to help stage the show. Um, then it talks about the cost of hosting, which usually runs into tens of millions, with the cash-strapped BBC expected to need extra funding. Um, blah, blah, blah. There's not really much else it says in this article, but it does go into a little bit of depth about some of the cities in contention, such as Glasgow, Birmingham, Newcastle, Manchester, and the rest. It's interesting that it mentions Newcastle, as one of the front runners, because as far as I'm concerned, I don't really think they stand much of a chance, but you never know. Then we've got this little bit from the Times. I don't know who wrote this. Eastern European countries have a long tradition of harnessing the soft power of song to combat military might. At the end of the Cold War, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania used spontaneous singing demonstrations to underscore their desire for independence from Soviet influence in what was popularly termed the singing revolution. Likewise for Ukraine, Eurovision, which is popular across the continent despite its kitsch reputation, has become a symbol of resistance. The winning song this year is a patriotic anthem on war and redemption. It is fitting that Britain play its part in continuing that tradition by agreeing to host next year. Under normal circumstances, blah blah blah. As runner-up, Britain has that responsibility, and it is a familiar tune to dance to. We've hosted the event more than any other country, and four times in place of another. And though it costs an average of 10 to 20 million euros to stage, we already have the necessary infrastructure, transport links, and accommodation in place. It is of relatively little cost to us. That's an interesting point, because a lot of people have commented in the media over the past week or so about how we can actually afford to do this. We can afford to do it. But it's whether people actually want to actually pay for it. Yes, indeed. Anyway, uh, the Eurovision contest has always been political, founded on a post-war vision of European cultural integration. But its clout this year and the next will lie in providing light relief to the heavy burden of war, and so on and so forth. And then the main article in the Times, which has a picture of Sam Ryder in a pink bucket hat. Um, more of the same, really. Um, apparently Liverpool has said its costs would be about £2 million, which is quite cheap. Um, the BBC said yesterday that there were a number of funding options to be explored that will contribute towards delivering a fantastic event and great value for the licence fee payers. Ticket sales and sponsorship help to defray costs, while the value of the associated prestige for host countries is hard to quantify. The BBC is, however, having to plug a £1.4 billion hole in its finances after the government throws the licence fee. Um, and then really it just talks about the bidding process again. So there you go, some more newspaper articles over the past week regarding Britain hosting the competition. Fairly positive, it has to be said, but like I also mentioned earlier, a lot of the media are talking about the actual costing of the event. So that's it. I've witted on for nearly 20 minutes now. A video of two halves, almost. Um, yeah, just that sort of confidence, travel anxiety thing. Um, I don't know. I mean... Something I haven't touched on, really, is how the thing that would appeal to me the most is the actual event. All of the other stuff, and I know this sounds strange, but all of the other stuff, like the pre-parties, meet and greets, all of that, I don't really think that's for me. I don't think I'd want to be swept up in it, if you see what I mean, which I know is really strange. I should be totally embracing such a thing. Um, but I think, really, for example, if it was in Manchester... I'd go for the final and then come home as soon as possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I've mentioned, if I was able to go, vlogging it, trying to actually get some footage while I'm there. How that would work, I don't really know. Um, maybe a friend could film me. I have really no idea at all. It's all still to come. And I'm not really fretting about any of that just yet. But yes, do let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, maybe you can relate. Uh, maybe you have you know, something to say about such matters. Whatever it is, let me know. And it's been a big ramble from me once again, but that's nothing new really, is it? Until next time, take care of yourselves. Stay safe, and I'll be back with more Eurovision-related content before too long.
Bye for now.